G'day guys, you're back with Miracle Max. You know, I've been sucked in again for doing a repair for Mrs. Miracle. This time, it's a vacuum cleaner. So, let's get into it. So we've had this Dyson vacuum cleaner for a number of years. I think they were first bought out in 2005 and they were the ones that had the cyclonic technology where it's a bagless system, it scoots around in a cyclone and it's all kept in this container here. Actually, not a bad design itself, but just like anything that gets old and crusty, things start to drop off and wear and we've got to do some repairs on it. Um, easiest way to find out information on it is to just tip it over and we can see the details written there. So if we flip the vacuum cleaner on its back, there's a sticker just underneath one of the wheels and that indicates that it's a DC08 origin. Very classy back in its time. Serial number was 183-AU, that's Australian of course, dash B, 20708. So what's wrong with this thing? So if we plug it in, turn it on, press the go button, hmm, nobody home. Disappointed! As usual, safety first, put the cord away. That way you can vis visibly see that it's been put away and you're out of harm's way. Pop the top off, get that out the road. First things first, we need to figure out how to get this baby apart, okay? There's a lot of components that are clipped into place, so I'll get those apart shortly, and then we'll see if it's a switch problem or perhaps a motor problem. Mrs. Miracle did say that she started to smell a bit of smoke, burnt electrical type stuff, which is never a good sign. Um, and eventually it just stopped working. Let's hope we haven't lost the magic smoke. First of all, we need to remove the filter lid. So we just get under that, pop that out the road, swing that around so you can see it. Of course, it's got the filter inside that needs to come out and be put to one side. And of course, that'll get a good cleaning up before it goes back together. This hinge assembly here now comes off. Um, it's just held together with a couple of pins that go in like this. So we need to just gently lever one side off to pop that cap off. So we just get in there and where the hinge is, just gently lever it out. That's the theory behind it, and off she comes. Both of these wheels need to come off now. The only problem is, you know what plastic is like once it's been um, aged and uh, gets hot, etc. They can become quite brittle. So I'll just put in a couple of screwdrivers all the way around to try and uh, remove it evenly. In theory, <coughs> should pop off. like a DOS. So that's all these little teeth that hold it into place. Um, so just gently pull it off. But like I said, I recommend a couple of screwdrivers going around because these are quite old and eventually they get brittle. And that should pop off. Once again, make sure all your teeth are in good nick. And there's pretty much six Torx bits screws that have to come out. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they come out next. Now that all six screws have been removed, the next thing you do is just pull out a little bit of your cord. Um, I'll explain why shortly. Uh, once that's locked out of place, I've got, you know, a couple of feet, whatever, half a meter. Um, then you can just gently move this out of place. This back cavity, or this back cover, I should say. Now the reason that we uh, pulled this cord out, like we did here, is so that this retracting wheel doesn't get pulled out of place, because you don't want that. Obviously it's just another thing. So if you have enough length on here, you can just stick your cover to one side. We've got our switch assembly over here, we've got our motor assembly here. Now, logically speaking, if it was just a switch, would Mrs. Miracle have smelt uh, burning electrical stuff? Well, I doubt it. We'll test this switch, that most likely that switch is okay. Firstly, what we do to get the motor assembly out as a whole, we just pull it out like this. And of course, there's a few wires that we need to disconnect first. We do need to disconnect our brown off of our switch here. So this brown wire on our switch has a little pin that comes through the hole here. That needs to be pushed down. And then that uh, wire connector should come out. And off she comes. We still need to get this uh, blue wire apart. Um, obviously it's just got a cover on it for some reason. So now that I can see it clearly, it just pops apart like that. 
wire apart, job's done. So that motor should now be able to be pulled out totally separate. So with the vacuum cleaner housing put aside, we can now focus on our motor. Um, I guess, look, let's just start with basic, shall we? Let's just check this switch just for giggles, okay? Seems to be clicking in and out, okay? But does it mean it's got continuity? Let's just check that. Of course, the easiest way to check and see if the switch is working is by putting our multimeter on ohms. We're checking for continuity. So we just put uh, our two terminals across our switch. It must be open at the moment, I guess. We press down on there. Should be closed with a very minimal ohm reading. We just switch it off and on a few times, make sure that everyone's happy. And it seems to be working okay. All right, so, well, that's more the indication I would like to find, uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, something along those lines. So the switch might be a little bit dicky, but surely that should still work. Hmm, that's interesting. We're certainly getting a, a variety there, aren't we? Is there any way that we could um, prove whether the switch is faulty or not? Well, why don't we just bypass the switch? What is a switch? A switch is just two bits of wire that haven't touched at the moment, okay? So to prove whether it's a switch fault or not, all we need to do is bypass the actual switch. Therefore, we put power, um, this is our active and this is our neutral, straight from the wall socket. If the motor doesn't work, then we know that obviously it's a motor fault. Um, if it does work, we know it's a switch fault. It's as simple as that. Just keep in mind, guys, you have to be safe at this particular point. We're going to be powering up the unit. I'm just going to use a, a jumper wire with a couple of alligator clips on it, just all joined together. All right, so all we do is we connect this fella here, and we know that the blue wire is already connected. Um, and then we need to somehow get in here. Hopefully that might uh, do the job. All right, so since we've got our cable out a fair old distance and um, we should be able to plug that in all right so i'm going to turn it on at the wall now now as i said i've bypassed the switch so let's see what happens and as i figured absolutely nothing just pull that out of the wall again make sure you've got it visible in front of you um, so we know that it's i didn't believe that it would be a switch fault anyway but um, certainly doesn't hurt to try does it Right, so now that we've proven that the switch is okay, just by bypassing the switch, we've found there's no power going to the motor. So we can just pull the motor apart now, put all the rest of the stuff aside, and see what the go is. On our motor, you can see that there are little clips, four of them in total, um, that can just be pulled off. Um, I'm also thinking, not a bad idea to mark where these go. Max muscles are a bit weak this morning, so we might need to just gently lever it off with a screwdriver. Come on, little fella. Here you come. You can do it, man. You can do it. Just gently lever those out. That whole front cover should come off now. We need to push this through, this rubber seal, so that front cover can now come off. And I guess this rubber would come off as well, like a dust to one side thank you very much and that's looking better there we go oh that doesn't look good yep give it the old sniff test we've got some burnt marks around the back here um, which is particularly not attractive um, what else we can we see in there oh that commutator doesn't look overly healthy can you see what i mean the commutator is this segmented piece in here you can see how dark it is now that could be an indication of two things. It could be the brushes themselves. This is a, a brushed DC motor. It could be the brushes themselves that are worn out, um, or it could be um, damage of the motor itself. Now I'll spin that over and have a really good look at the commutator and uh, see if I can see any chunks taken out of it or any reason that it's not working. Now, uh, yeah, seen waste. Let's have a look at the brushes themselves. Just work around the camera there. Now the brushes are these pieces here, they're carbon. And in time they're spring loaded. So in time they lose their tension against the commutator and um, eventually they wear out. We've got quite a bit of dust, etc., in here, but hey, it's a vacuum cleaner, what do you expect? We're seeing a lot of black around here, but that may just be the carbon itself wearing off, as you can see, um, over time. Now, of course, we've got bearings to check and other stuff as well. So let's 
pull that thing apart, check it out, see what the actual fault is. Why is it not working? Carbon can get pretty icky at times, gets all over your hands and on your clothes, etc. I don't want to hand in my dirty clothes to Mrs. Miracle and then have a washing machine to repair as well. So make sure you've got a rag around to clean parts up as you go. All right, let's start by pulling out the brushes here. But once again, it certainly doesn't hurt to put a mark on either connector to make sure that they go back in the original place. So if you have these hooked up the wrong way, you'll probably end up with a rotational problem. The vacuum cleaner might actually blow instead of suck. And that'd really suck. We have a screw here that needs to be undone. That'll go onto our uh, field coil by the looks of things. Now, field coil is the coils um, either side of the uh, armature. All a motor is, is two basic um, magnetic fields working in opposition to one another. Um, I won't go into too much detail with it, but yeah, it's fairly basic. Um, it's not all that complex, the, the concept behind it all anyway. All right, gen gently lever it off there. Ooh, one thing we have got in here that's possible that could be a fault is I'd say it's a thermal switch. Um, I'll look that up online shortly but generally speaking it'll have a thermal switch of some description. If this thing's taking a beating it overheats, psh, blows that thermal fuse um, and of course then it won't work whatsoever. So we'll definitely check that. Um, how can we check it? Well it's fairly simple actually. We should have continuity between this point, there's our thermal fuse in the middle, between this point here and of course this point here. If we don't, then that means our thermal fuse has blown. So we've just got our multimeter on ohms once again, we're looking for continuity. So up the wazoo, up she goes. And then of course exactly the same with this fella here, and we should and we do, we have continuity. In that case, this thermal fuse is okie dokie. Sweet. Save a dollar there, mate. Next on the agenda is to remove these carbon brushes. Looks fairly simple, I would imagine. Uh, they're held in place by this collar here, but it looks like you can access them easy enough with this Phillips head screw. So this may be a series wound motor. We'll have a look. So this is where our um, power comes in, of course. We can ch check between there and there. Now we've got no continuity. What does that tell us? Well, first of all, obviously the field has to go through something else before it comes back to the neutral side of things. So what we need to do is go on one side of our um, active, perhaps. We'll come across to our brush pack. We've got nothing there. Does that say that it's uh, broken, perhaps? Well, let's go over the other side and touch that. Aha, now we have continuity, don't we? So that tells us that um, that is connected there. So let's do the opposite and see if we have a problem there. Let's check there and check there and we should have continuity the same, which we do. Good. Um, of course, the, the brush pack is the important thing because it goes through this side, goes through the brush pack through here, goes through our um, armature winding, then comes back through the other brush pack and then comes out the other side to return to our neutral. What I'm gonna do is um, just check for continuity between earth, um, so this point here, and any of our uh, commutator. We should have nothing whatsoever. I should be able to get no continuity between the commutator itself, all those little segments on the armature, and the housing of the motor itself. So we flip it around, and if there was a short, we would expect to see something like this, all right? But we're not. I'm just keeping that on the commutator at the moment. You can hear it going past those segments and we've got no short to ground, which is excellent. And of course, this point here and this point here should have no continuity either on both segments of the field. So we don't, that appears to be in fairly good nick. Sometimes when it gets hot, you can see the varnish on the wiring itself will burn off. And of course that can create shorts in between the wiring. The only real way to test it is to pull it apart um, and do a proper insulation test on the motor itself. That will tell us if there's any shorts. At this point in time, I believe that the only major problem with this particular motor are the brushes. And in particular, the length of the brushes. This fella here 
is pretty damn sad. You can see where there's burn marks across there. And on these brushes, uh, let's have a look. Is it this side, the other side? You can see a clear line here, and that is your end of life line, basically. So when the carbon wears down to that particular point, it's time to throw them away. And if you can see um, a line on this fella, you've got better eyes than I have, because she's for schnookered, mate. It's time to replace them. I just had a look on eBay. I can get a, a brush pack for, I don't know, 16 bucks delivered in about a day or two. And at this point in time, um, I believe that that's what I'm gonna do. Another motor itself, I think you're looking around about the $100 mark. Um, so why, why pay that when I can do the brush pack and that should get the thing up and running again. Gotta keep Mrs. Miracle happy. Uh, other reviews that I've seen on later model Dysons, they say that they're a little bit disappointed. They reckon the earlier ones were far superior to the later ones, but hey, there's no surprise there. With um, big manufacturers, they always try and save costs by cutting quality, don't they? But anyway, we should be able to get this back together. I'll order some brushes and we can pop him back together, get it up and running, and put a smile on the dial of Mrs. Miracle. I did say before that I wasn't overly happy with this switch, the way the ohm readings were, conductivity, um, you know, switching off and on, etc. I'm not overly happy with these uh, connectors either. They're at the terminals, the way they're fitting aren't too fantastic. I put a little couple of dots on here so that I can assemble it the correct way. Uh, looks like there's just a couple of little points here and on the other side that need to be um, gently levered out. So we'll just see if we can get that out and we'll have a look at what it's like inside. There we go. It's a strange setup, I must say. Oh, look at those contacts, hey? So I wasn't barking up the wrong tree, was I? They're definitely knackered. So they're gonna require a bit of uh, touch-up, and if we have a look in there too, we can clearly see that those contact points are quite burnt, aren't they? That would give us some um, poor readings, but I'm, I'll be able to just tidy those up with a bit of uh, sandpaper, etc., and make them better. The series wound or universal motor has only one path for current to flow and that's what we're using in this particular case in our vacuum cleaner. It's a series wound motor. Any faults in the connection or breakdown in the insulation and it won't work. It's only got one path to follow. Even if it's something as simple as a worn brush, check out the old one. That's it there. But have a look at its new friend. Look at the length of the uh, carbon on that, the brush there that clearly is our fault. As I said, a series wound motor only has one path to travel. Let me explain on the whiteboard. As in the case with any motor, we need a power supply. Our power supply in this case is supplied AC through our wall socket, isn't it? It goes in through one field coil or field winding through here, through a brush, through our armature via a commutator, out the other brush, through the other field coil, and then back to um, neutral in the power supply there. Now, in our case, we have a faulty brush, don't we? So if we take out that brush there, you can see clearly that there's no continuity, therefore the motor won't work. That's a series wound or universal motor. Because we're fitting a new set of brushes, we need to make sure that the commutator or the area that the brushes go onto is in good condition. You can see that's quite darkened there through years of um, use, sparking, and it's also carbon wearing away. So the best thing that you can do is just clean it up with a bit of um, emery tape, rotate it and clean it up with some emery tape and make sure there's no bad grooves in there and that the brush has a good um, surface to rotate on. I've given a bit of a sand over and of course I've made sure that I've blown it out. We don't want any um, copper particulates in between those commutator joins there. Um, we want to make sure that those segments are clean. So just giving it a, a, a light tidy up with a bit of uh, emery tape. I started out with just a little bit of 80. I finished up with a little bit of 240 just to get a, a nice fine surface on it. So I'm happy that that surface is in good condition and that the brushes will go on there and connect correctly. All that remains now is to reassemble it back together. Firstly, of course, we need to fit the new brushes. This terminal here on the inside goes to the field winding. That needs to be absorbed by or connected to this section here in the brush. Just a matter of sliding the brush in correctly, making sure that that terminal connects to our brush assembly there. Push it in, there we go, and all we have to do is screw it into place. So at this stage, to prove that we've solved our issue, 
all we have to do is make sure that we have continuity between our two points here. Keep in mind, series circuit goes through this field coil, this brush into the armature, out that brush, out that field coil, back out this terminal. So, do we have continuity? Let's have a look. And yes, 5.8 ohms. Awesome. Very, very good. One of the cool things about a universal motor or a series motor is that it can be either AC or DC. So even though this Dyson vacuum cleaner is powered by AC from the wall, of course, I can actually test it with DC. So we're not looking for extremely high speeds or anything, simply does it rotate. So I've got a 12 volt battery here that I use, that I got out of a uninterrupted power supply, UPS, and I just use that for testing. So does it work? I've got my brushes back in, my impeller back in, and we just power it up and there we go, she's rotating. So I know that it works okay, I can happily put it all back together. Remember before I said that the switch contacts needed cleaning, and I was right. I've actually cleaned the contacts, and um, they're better than they were. They were quite dark, and they were quite burnt. Um, I've managed to clean them up okay, which is okie dokie, I suppose, um, all the contacts. But the main problem is that when I pulled it apart, there should be, I believe, another tiny spring like this one, and I can't find it anywhere. So looks like I've got to buy myself a switch because I can't find a spring that small anywhere. And that's the only thing that's holding me back. So once I get another switch, I can uh, totally assemble the vacuum cleaner, and get it up and running. But at least we've got the motor going, so I feel pretty confident that it should be all honky-dory when it's all back together. So the switch turned up through the post the other day. Uh, wasn't I think it cost me about on a 20 bucks delivered. A little more pricey than I expected, but I'll be damned if I can find that little spring. Okay, so let's cut her open, see what we've got inside. Now, one thing I have noticed, like switch off and switch on, not a problem, but uh, one thing I have noticed is that uh, the old switch, these terminals here, were extremely wobbly, like very, very loose. These are nice and tight. So that, uh, that's a good sign there. It's a little bit of a different design too. The old one just had uh, the legs sort of just dangling over. They weren't that very secure. And it was that method that they used there. And uh, you can understand why it sort of wobbled around all over the place. But the new, new switch here, which is a different design, is certainly held in place. And that'll give better continuity to the actual switch itself. All we have to do now is to pop it into place. It doesn't really matter which way they go because it's a switch. A switch is purely a break in two wires as we can see here. So uh, let's pop him on there, pop him on there. Once those are on, all we have to do is, believe it or not, just sit it there for now because uh, the rest of it will hold it into place once the external or this section of the housing goes on. So that goes on next. You simply slide this over, making sure that uh, our retractor wheel is in place, it hasn't slipped out. We simply slide that over, and fingers crossed it should all just nicely fit into place. At this point it's not a bad idea to actually lift the motor on its end, and hopefully that will centralise the motor and help the cover to go down into place. That's the theory, but it doesn't appear to be. Just keep in mind, if it's not going to go on, don't force it to start with. You might need to pull stuff off and have another look. Make sure that you've got it in place. So I've discovered the problem. The retractor wheel was not located properly. This has a little lug down the bottom here that needs to fit into that little um, reta retaining area, I guess you could call it, that little cutaway there. Um, also, another thing, obviously in due time, these... Uh, Retractor wheels tend to lose tension. The spring inside tends to lose tension. And of course, your, your cable doesn't get pulled back properly. So now's an ideal time to just pull it out and wind the cable around a couple of times. That will give you extra tension and help it to uh, retract a lot better. Um, just be careful when you do that, that's all. So I need to locate that little lug back into place. And of course, this this clear section here, clear plastic, goes into this little groove back here. So as long as we put that into place, uh, both top and bottom, like a dos, 
and yes I can feel that it's located properly now and I've wound my cable around a couple of times so the whole thing should clip together nicely now. I must admit this switch is a bit of a pain it's meant to sit there and get wedged by the outer housing but the problem is of course as soon as you let it go it wants to fall out so look I'm not sure if it might be an idea just to put a little bit of uh, glue there you know just an absolutely tiny bit or a bit of silicon just to hold it stop it flopping out all the time while you put the outer housing on so just a tiny dab of silicon there should do the trick and now if we locate it back in place it should fingers crossed sit where it's meant to sit so just before I put all the screws in because there's quite a few um, I just want to make sure that it's all working correctly and uh, my switch is working and the retractor wheel everything works properly before I start to screw it all down so uh, does it work oh yes it does nice Mrs Miracle will be happy uh, retractor wheel yes it's pulling in keeping in mind it's still attached to the wall so I can happily put uh, what was it six screws one two three four five six whatever it was put it back together of course I've got my wheels to put back on yet and uh, the cover plate with the filter got to clean out the filter put back the collector thing that goes in here that collects all the dust so I've still got a bit of work to go yet but at least I know it's running and my retractor wheel is correct into its position okay leave that in an obvious place for Mrs Miracle to see so that she does the vacuuming She knows I can't leave things alone. I've got to take it for a road test. Typical, sucked into vacuuming yet again. Okay, by now you should know the drill. If you haven't subscribed, do so please give it a like feel free to comment down below don't forget about that notification bell you don't want to miss any future videos so until next time guys we've got to get back to the vacuuming it's miracle max signing off catch you later